So I'm just going to talk about a few things. So first, the first thing people should focus on when they make a presentation is assessment of their audience. This often goes ignored, especially when we use slideware, because it's, sometimes we think the most important thing is our content, gathering our content together and making sure that we have all of our stuff, because who's the hero? It's me, the presenter. But we've learned that actually the hero is the audience. So questions that you could ask, or perhaps that a piece of software could ask, are who will be in the audience? What do the people in the audience know or believe that I can build on? What do the people in the audience know or believe that I have to overcome? Oftentimes people in an audience will think different thoughts, diverse thoughts, divergent thoughts from what you think. And so you should know and have a feeling about what these thoughts are. And these, this is information you can get pretty easily from anyone in the, anyone around the presentation uh, you'll be doing. So if you're doing a presentation at a conference, you can talk to a conference organizer and ask about the, the makeup of who might be in the audience. Or if you're in class, you probably know a lot of people in the audience. Knowing who's out there really helps. By the end, you should consider what do you want the people in the audience to learn? What should they feel? And most importantly, what do you want them to do with that information that you're going to give them? These presentations aren't simply about displaying your work or displaying what you think about. It's about encouraging others to think about things and encouraging them to do something with that new information. Another thing that I think current software, well, it actually supports it really well, is the identification of key messages. Slideboard does this in the form of bullet points. And bullet points are really powerful because they help people think and distill out facts into uh, tiny little pieces. However, this forces the presenter into thinking about points in terms of how a computer uses points. An audience can't simply have a bunch of data dumped on their head and ex be expected to remember that information. Instead, we have to call this, this information. We need to, we need to uh, explain it in a way that the audience can walk away with a few really important facts that they'll remember instead of a million tiny little points that they probably want. And software can, can uh, surely better support this. Also, the use of evaluations is something that's strongly understated today. We often ignore our, our own evaluations, but imagine this scenario, and I'm sure a lot of us have been in this scenario. You're preparing for a presentation, and you've been either preparing for days or weeks, or maybe just all of last night. And you come, you come to your presentation and you're nervous a few minutes beforehand, and you're, you're, you hope it goes well. Then you come up and you make your presentation, and then you're done and you feel really good, right? It just feels so good to be done with a nerve-wracking presentation. It feels good to be done with anything that's nerve-wracking. But then a few hours later, hopefully, at some point, you think about, well, how did I do? Did my audience actually understand what I was talking about? Did they take anything away from that? And if you don't use evaluations of any sort, then you probably don't know at all, and you probably never know unless you have the opportunity to, the opportunity to ask them. Building evaluations is something that can be easily built into software, and, and tailoring them to your presentation can, can is, a, is a really simple addition to, to the software. The final issue I want to talk about is simply the interface to uh, presentation preparation. The interface should help uh, the, the presenter consider a number of learning tools, not just slides. Slides are one tool in the presenter's toolbox. And yes, they can be good for some things, but they aren't good for everything. So software can help, um, help with audience-audience interaction, presenter-audience interaction. It can help find images, videos, statistics, exercises, a number of things that can help uh, audiences learn the material. There are many ways to improve uh, presentations. And I think so realizable software is, is a good goal. I think this is possible, and I plan on continuing this, this, uh, this work. In fact, that's part of what I want to get across here today. If anybody would like to join me, I know that I can't do this alone. So if there's anyone with interest in this, please contact me. Before I end, I'd like to give thanks to a number of people. Um, the IU UITS Toastmasters were a lot of help, as well as uh, the Good Morning Toastmasters, both in Bloomington, St. Thomas Lutheran Church, Andy Goodman, Cliff Atkinson, and Lawrence Lessig, Eric Stolterman, my advisor. Um, 
and all of my instructors and peers here at the School of Informatics. It has been a wonderful and humbling experience to work with all of you. In conclusion, I'd just like to say that presentations are not merely about slides or the bullet points we put on them. It's about transferring a message from a presenter to an audience. In order for our current situation to improve, our PowerPoint culture must be changed from its core. And this responsibility is not just on the presenters, but on audiences as well. Audiences must demand effective communication. I encourage you all to do so. Talk to conference organizers about this. Demand good presentation skills from your students and peers. And above all else, expect greatness from yourself. Together we can learn a lot, but only if we make the effort. Thanks.